Well, let's start over with the easy question. Where, when, and by who was Vector formed? Uh, I founded Vector in... Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but I guess in like the late 2002, I hooked up with this guy named Willie Redshaw, who played drums, and we recorded an, uh, a demo in December 2002, and uh, we finished it in like January of 2003. So. Vector was basically formed around that time, and I found Eric in 2004. Uh, after that, Blake joined in 2007, and Frank joined in 2008. And then, with all of our powers combined, <laughs> we uh, put out Black Future. It was our first full-length album in uh, 2009. So, and that was all. We formed the band in Arizona. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and since then we've we've moved out to Philadelphia. Oh, yes. When I saw your band logo, it reminded me, well, I can say a bit, but a lot of Flypod. <laughs> yeah. Do you um, consider them as an influence to you as a band? I'm 32 now, and they've been one of my favorite bands since I was like 16, so like half my life they've been one of my favorite bands. Um, I, it was never meant to be like a Voivod tribute or anything. It was just like I really liked the idea of putting sci-fi and metal together. And um, the logo just was supposed to be a sci-fi metal logo. And I think people got thrown off because they both start with a V. <laughs> yeah. And you both have indeed science fiction team songs. Yes. And the older Voivod when they were still a trash and speed metal band. It reminds me sometimes of the music you make also. Similar, yeah. We do some weird chords. We don't just stick to the power chords. Um, I, f I think Voivod had much more of a punk rock kind of feel than we ever did. But yeah, there's definitely similarities. Because I can't help it because they're one of my main influences. Who else do you see as influences for your own compositions? Uh, destruction. Creator, like all the German thrash, you know, Assassin, Sodom, uh, black metal influences like uh, Immortal, uh, Emperor was a big influence, like uh, especially the Prometheus album really like grabbed onto me. Um, bands like Rush or Pink Floyd, yes. Um, Very broad spectrum of bands. Yeah, and we're never afraid to like cross into other territories because the whole point is just to write music that comes from the heart and it doesn't matter what genre people want to classify us as we just play what we want you, know? you just said in the early days you hailed from Arizona and then you went to in 2012 I believe to Philadelphia yeah what was the main reason to leave? Did you play at all venues in Arizona and wanted to see something new, or? It was hot. Arizona is really hot. <laughs> it's a lot of desert, I believe. It's uh, it was like a hundred and twenty degrees in the summertime, Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah. I don't even, I don't know what that is in Celsius off my a top lot. Of my head. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is that, and also, we had toured the West Coast a bunch like California and we already had a really good fan base on the west coast and we had only been to the east coast once or twice so we just were like now oh, let's go out east yeah. and uh, just I don't know it was something different it was way different for us and we just wanted to change new territory yeah yeah I was wondering you, you just uh, your last album that you released Terminal Red Dux. It's a concept album. How uh, did you get the idea for that concept? It was. It grew slowly over a lot of time. Um, ever since I wrote Outer Isolation, like the title track, uh, it's about this like lone astronaut who's in space, and there's no explanation of why he's in space. Uh, so I just wanted to build a story from that. And that's where Terminal Redux starts, is the end of Outer Isolation is 
the beginning of Terminal Redux, and uh, it explains that astronaut's story. Um, but I think when I say that it, it took a long time for to come up with the concept, I mean like uh, like when I was 15 or something like 16 maybe. I had first heard uh, Rush's Hemispheres, yeah. and there's the line in there where it says, uh, "We shall call you Cygnus, the or we will call you Cygnus, the god of balance. You shall be," and it's just been like echoing in my head since you know for like 15, 16 years now, and maybe about four years ago when I was trying to think of like the concept, I went back to those lyrics and and did some uh, research about Cygnus and you know it's a the swan atop the stellar tree yeah. and the stellar tree is the Milky Way gal the arm of the Milky Way galaxy and uh, you know the ancient people thought that that the arm of the Milky Way was this like river of souls and Cygnus was the the ruler on top like guiding these souls or kind so, of like the crown on it yeah so Cygnus uh, within Terminal Redux is um, it takes the the symbol the symbolism of the constellation, but makes it a very real thing where there's this space regime controlling life and death and every aspect of people's lives, and um, so yeah, it's a it's a culmination of a, a bunch of different things, but. Um, it's. I'd say mostly it, it goes back to um, drawing off, drawing inspiration from Russia's hemispheres. Just that one song. Yeah. What I also like about the album is that you worked uh, with a band. I forgot the name for a second. Uh, on the first and the last song, you have a, a, back, a choir. Yes. With you. Charging the void and recharging the void. Um, uh, we incorporated the vocals of Naima Maddox and Rosemary Fiki. Um, it was probably due in part, like, the, these vocal melodies just like popped in my head one day in the back, back row, uh, the choir vocals. And it might have had to do something with like moving to Philadelphia and being exposed to all the like soul and the funk music and there's all these like neighborhood like local shows where there's not very many people but it's um it's quality it's qual it's, it's, it's quality. good it's it's nice it's fun and uh i just happened to be at one of those like you know block party neighborhood shows and um, Naima was up there singing and doing what she does and I was just like, oh, that's, that's the voice, I need that in the album. So after she had played I, uh, and got off stage, I, I introduced myself and told her what I was doing. And, and you know, she's just like, uh, you know, a black girl from Philadelphia and I had like, she was singing some soul and I didn't know if she'd be into it. She's like, then she started just talking about like, Oh, yeah, like I'm really into like Dream Theater and like all she's listing off all these cool bands and I was like, all right, right on. So and she was like, way into it right off the bat, um, and it was really cool, like kind of incorporating uh, those that style of uh, choir vocals and soul vocals like into thrash metal and and what we were doing and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And she is from the Philadelphia Soul Singers. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, your last album was released on Earache Records, which surprised me because you are a band I didn't expect to be on a label like Earache Records. It happened very strangely how we got on Earache. Um, we signed a three album contract with Heavy Artillery. Uh, we put out two albums under Heavy Artillery, which was Black Future and Outer Isolation. Yeah. And then uh, Heavy Artillery Records went bankrupt. But we still owed a third album, so Eric came in and bought Heavy Artillery's catalog of all their artists. Uh, but they only wanted to keep us; they didn't care about the other bands, okay. I think. But so then we owed Eric our third album, 
and that's how that all happened. So okay. it's it's kind of strange, but yeah. Uh, Terminal Red Rock, the, the 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 artwork. Who made it? Gosh, it I love it. Adam Burke. Okay. Adam Burke from Portland, Oregon. Uh, he does uh, his. I Is guess he like his, an illustrator for magazines or something? He, because it he made does it. a lot of band things. He does a lot of his own art. Um, his art, you can look him up online as uh, Nightjar Illustrations. Nightjar is one word. Okay. Um, he's fantastic. He actually hit us up like uh, th I don't know, three or four years ago, and we weren't even ready to put out an album. We didn't even know really what it was going to be about, but we really liked his art. He's really good at uh, the old like seventies, like sci-fi novel, like the paperback yeah. cover art. He does a lot of stuff like that. We wanted something like that was kind of like that, but a little bit more modern. And he just did a, a wonderful job. Absolutely. Uh, I read it was partially recorded in your own studio, and it's, it has also has some experimental feeling. The, the album. Yes. Studio is a an exaggeration because <laughs> we don't have studio. Our home studio. It was uh, it was just like we recorded our raw tracks straight into a laptop, and just the guitars and the bass. Uh, we just recorded it raw into a laptop. Um, we did live tracking for the drums in an actual studio, which was Panther Studios, and then uh, or Panther Pro Audio, and the vocals I also did live at Panther Pro Audio. But yeah, the guitars and the bass, we, we kind of had to do it that way because we didn't have a budget for this. The whole recording, mixing, mastering, recording, we had like, uh, like $5,000. Okay, yeah. wow. And so yeah, you did we, some impressive work on we, we had to somehow make this massive album work with our budget, and so we did all the guitars straight into a laptop, and once we had everything tracked the way we wanted it, uh, we sent all the drums and the vocals and the guitar files uh, over to the person who did our first two albums, which was Byron um, and Villain Recording, and he... Uh, took our raw guitar files that we just went into a laptop and he put them through real amplifiers and then mic'd that. So it was, uh, it was done strangely, but thanks to modern technology it was all possible. I'm, to I'm totally surprised because I was thinking you used uh, a lot of vintage uh, equipment for it. Well, he did. It he sounds like he used some big massive equipment once it was... Like, he, he basically put the files uh, direct into a guitar head and for him listening to it, he was just hearing like perfect takes like the whole time he was recording rather than hearing us do a, a bunch of messing up and all that. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that. Uh, you, you just said uh, the, the concept album you started when you were 15, Turn the Red Dogs? Uh, not quite. Or like. There was just that, the uh, the lyrics for uh, the Cygnus and the God of Balance, that was just always interesting to me. And okay. I, didn't, I didn't really put that together um, with the concept until like five years ago. Okay, but that's still a long time. Yeah. How did it feel to complete it on the record? Uh, that you had it finished? It was amazing. I mean, uh, it really was just a lot of time, you know, to make that album. Um, it's just so much, th like, I don't know, it's just like brewing and thought for years and trying to write each note to be perfect with the concept and yeah, it just took a long time. It felt good. It uh, was very satisfied when, when I started hearing even we even did some like demo tracking before the actual recording and just through the demo stuff I was like this is it's gonna be good but then once we started hearing the like the final mixes I was like okay I was, I was really like kind of proud of it that's all way cool <laughs> uh, last year you visited the Netherlands for the first time 
What do you remember about your show in Eindhoven at the metal meeting? One million stairs up the, uh, the venue. <laughs> I'm serious. There was like, I think there was a, like a hundred stairs going from the bottom floor to like, there's like different levels where the different stages are. And then the backstage the, is like all the way at the top. And like, you'd like get all the way up to the backstage and then you'd be like, oh, I forgot like a cable in the van. <laughs> you have to go all the way down the stairs go in the van and then go all the way back up. It's kind of a funny thing. But yeah. Did you ever see that movie, The Spinal Tap? Yeah, it was, it was a Spinal Tap people... moment. <laughs> <laughs> totally reminded me of that. Yeah, I was wondering, as you well, are... My legs were like so sore the next day, I could barely walk. <laughs> Some stairs to remember, in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> the show was great though. The show the was show good. The, uh, we had a, we had a good time today. We had a good time then. Like uh, it's it's cool. I like the cities around here. Um, I was just noticing there's something weird like along your uh, rivers and canals. There's no like safety railing. No, there used to be, but I took it away. You took it away. It looks better this way. <laughs> it looks better without the safety rails. <laughs> <laughs> there's cars parked like right along the river and like. You get out of your car, you just <laughs> fall in the river. Oh, that has happened. <laughs> Absolutely. I was thinking, as you are a band with a science fiction team, I bet you look, uh, you like uh, science fiction movies also? Yeah, yeah, since I was... My dad got me into science fiction and like horror movies uh, when I was like four and five. Like, um, Blade Runner, um, Mad Max, obviously the Star Wars movies, um, like THX 1138. Yeah. Um, Close Encounters, I bet. Yeah, oh yeah, Close Encounters. Space Hunter is like one of my all-time favorites. I just like fell in love with that movie as a kid, and it's kind of hard to find nowadays. But uh, yeah, it's called Space Hunter, and it's it's so awesome. It's like a post-apocalyptic alien world. It's they kind of combine the two. Okay. Cool ladies movie. Haven't seen that one. But I keep it in mind. Space Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. Um some newer ones like uh Moon was probably one of my all time favorite like newer sci fi movies. Uh it's really really cool. Well I already got my last question. Okay. Any future plans besides doing a lot of gigs? Uh, just gigs for now. I can't even, like, after finishing this album, uh, I just want to relax my brain for a little bit uh, and just play. We have, like, a tour in North America in November, and then I think we're coming back to Europe in spring, and that's as far as I want to think ahead right now. <laughs> just enjoy this album. Just enjoy it, yeah. Enjoy the uh, is there any chance that people can see you play the whole album? Yeah, even on, on this tour, as long as uh, all, everything is going smoothly on stage, all of our um, headlining shows, um, where we're not playing a festival, we're going to just play the whole album. Wow. Front to back. Um, we might be playing a lot of it at Metal Mean because I just found out that we have like a 70 minute set at okay. uh, Metal Mean. So, yeah. That's, I think that's the only festival where we get that long to play. But other than that, we have some headlining gigs on this tour that, uh, yeah, we'll try to play it front to back. Wow. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say to the readers of fuck.nl? Sci-fi or die! <laughs>